it's always interesting to me how God's economy works so much better than mine. You see, God doesn't really waste anything. As a matter of fact, He uses everything. And he, His mind is so bigger than my mindset that when I try to think about how He does things or why He does things, I really haven't a clue. And you know, the longer I'm in ministry and the longer I've been a Christian, which I've been a Christian for a very long time, it's been about, oh, I don't know, over 35 years plus, and though not every single day was in the direct ministry, like some people say, you know, well, were you paid? Well, no, I've never been paid. <laughs> Jesus said, I'll hire you to go out into the field for a penny. And at noon, he hired someone else for a penny. And at night, he hired someone else for a penny. And the one that was hired in the morning said, oh, but wait a minute, that's not fair. How come you're hiring all these guys for a penny? He says, look, you made your agreement. You get what you paid for. And so it's kind of like that's what we really get in ministry. We don't get what most people think. You know, Most people think that when you're in ministry and you're either in front of a camera or in worship in front of the people or that you know you're doing something and people see you that that's the important things you know those are the ones that God really uses no according to Jesus those are the ones that really God just uses sort of but the ones he blesses are those that can't be seen the people that are working in the unseen realm of God's kingdom those that are praying daily that they go into the quiet place, you know, that little hidden closet prayer, you know, where they give God the glory and honor, and nobody knows that they pray except God himself, and God moves heaven and earth on their behalf. There may be, for all I know, in America, only one person doing that, but that one person is holding America together, because the rest of us are out front, you know, promoting ourselves or promoting the ministry or this, that, or the other thing, and quite frankly, God says, do the opposite, you know, you don't need to be all about technology. Rather, you need to be all about the quality of what you are sharing, which is your relationship that you have with Jesus. Now, the funny thing is, is that I grew up with a man who was so on fire and in a lot of ways so wrong about a lot of things, but he was right about the few things he was right about that really it was easy to overlook his faults and to enjoy just how adamant and how positive he was about the one thing he was right about, and that was his love for God. His name was Keith Green, and as a matter of fact, he was really on fire for God himself, and he just couldn't get enough. And as a matter of fact, he lived out his life according to what he believed. And until God took him home, because heaven couldn't hold him and neither could earth, he had to go home and be with his father, that really his impact on the world was huge, especially among Jesus people. And to this day, the lyrics he sang and the words that he meant really still have that potent import of how much God's Spirit was in him. And so he wrote a song that said, Do your best and pray that it's blessed, and Jesus takes care of the rest. And the reality is, that's how simple a life as a Christian is. Christianity always will be about trying to program define, refine, present, promote, make a big presentation, a big demonstration of something that God wants to do personally. You see, I like the idea that people say it's not about religion, it's about relationship, but they're wrong. It's about religion and it's about relationship. You can't have any of those without God being in all of them. You see, it's about sin and it's about being forgiven. God is in both. God created all of it. So to kind of put it in perspective, really, it's all about him and not about what we think or our cliches. So Keith kind of figured that out pretty fast. He kind of simplified almost everything there was and stuck with what Jesus said and stuck with kind of the basics of reality of knowing God. And that reality boiled down to being childlike in a simple way with your faith. Not some demonstrative big, you know, you get intellectual and you think that you're going to argue somebody by hermeneutics, homiletics, and, you know, apologetics and getting all the edicts, you know, together so that way, you know, you can save an edict and not save the people. Because God saved the people for thine they are. You know, God created them. God allowed them life. 
God has given them opportunity for salvation. It's really all about doing your best and pray that it's blessed. And let Jesus take care of the rest. See, Jesus is doing something right now. He's interceding on behalf of the people. He's walking in the midst of seven churches that are existing here on earth. He's walking in the midst of your heart. Because where your home is, is where a church is. Where your heart is, is where you should be with Jesus together, creating in your own life that place and that temple of the Holy Spirit so that you'd be one with God and God would be one with you. That creation would be brought into uniformity of how God created it to be, which is communion or unity a oneness of God and creation. That the Creator would be with His creation and that together they would experience life. That's what it's all about, knowing God, knowing Jesus, knowing that eternity will be about knowing our Father. Because we really can't comprehend anything, much less too much about Him. But when we see Jesus, we can comprehend as He said to. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. So rather than get all technical about it, get all theological and try to figure out too much, you know, all the things that nuances that you know religion and pastors and priests and prophets and kings and all these other people like to play games with you know and argue and debate and get into all these you know kind of like spiral gyros you know about what the scripture says do this do your best you thought I was gonna forget pray that it's blessed let Jesus take care of the rest the Lord said he'll take care of the rest. He's going to do it. Jesus takes care of the rest. He'll see you through it. Jesus takes care of the rest. Yeah, the devil blew it because Jesus takes care of the rest. Trust in the Lord. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Rejoice in what you're going through. Be confident. Hey, what can you fear when death has been removed and God is near? You have nothing to fear but to rejoice in the day that the Lord has made, which is today, and to be glad in what God has prepared for you today, to find out and discover and re-examine your faith to see if you are in the faith, you know, the love symbol, you know, to see if your heart is beating true with the love that God has for you as well as for all the world. So go out today, share with someone in a simple way, hey, Tell them Jesus loves them. Walk away. Let God do the rest. It'll blow their mind and you'll be blessed. Because you just do your best and pray that it's blessed. And Jesus, I'm sure, will take care of the rest.